Ja.
Frau Bundespräsidentin, Herr Präsident, meine Damen und Herren, willkommen zu dieser Medienkonferenz. Wie Sie hören, wird die Medienkonferenz auf Deutsch und auf Keinisch gehalten. Für die Fragen, die dürfen auch Fragen auf Englisch gestellt werden, aber wir müssen auch Fragen auf Englisch gestellt werden. Wir haben nicht mehr Zeit, weil 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 wir haben so please be short in your questions after the two statements. Wir haben nicht viel Zeit, weil der Präsident Sie haben das Wort. Ja, besten Dank, Herr Präsident, Exzellenz, meine Damen und Herren. In wenigen Wochen tritt der russische Angriffskrieg gegen die Ukraine in sein drittes Jahr. Die Menschen müssen einen weiteren Kriegswinter erdulden und noch immer sehen wir jeden Tag neue Bilder des Leidens, die dieser Krieg verursacht. Wir Besucher, Herr Präsident, ist eine Ehre für uns und eine Gelegenheit, die Solidarität der Schweiz mit der Ukraine und dem ukrainischen Volk zu bekräftigen. Wir haben diese Solidarität auf lange Sicht zugesagt. Und die Ukraine kann sich der Verlässlichkeit unserer Zusagen zählen. Präsident Zelensky und ich haben heute darüber gesprochen, dass die Schweiz den Friedensprozess unterstützt. Präsident Zelensky hat mich gefragt, ob die Schweiz bereit wäre, in diesem Rahmen auch eine hochrangige, einen hochrangigen Friedensgipfel zu organisieren. Ich habe ihm bestätigt, dass die Schweiz bereit ist, eine Konferenz zu organisieren. Wir haben uns darauf geeinigt, dass wir die Details des weiteren Vorgehens vertieft prüfen, damit der Friedensprozess ein Erfolg wird. Die jeweiligen Teams werden diese Arbeiten jetzt an die Hand nehmen. Auf unserer Seite wird das EDA, den Lied, die Federführung für diese Arbeiten übernehmen. Die Schweiz wird sich auch in Zukunft für einen umfassenden in gerechten und dauerhaften Frieden in der Ukraine einsetzen. Die Schweiz, die Schweiz freut sich, einen Beitrag Ukraine. dazu Switzerland zu leisten. Happy to die Schweiz legt zudem einen besonderen Fokus auf den Wiederaufbau. Dieser ist aus Sicht des Bundesrates von strategischer Bedeutung. Die Stabilität des Kontinents. Als politischer Kompass für den Wiederaufbau dienen die Prinzipien Reconstruction der Ukraine, and Recovery. Recovery Conference We have the Lugano Principles defined at the Ukraine Recovery Conference in July 2022. For the next period of our strategy for international cooperation from 2025 to 2028, Switzerland has earmarked 1.5 billion Swiss francs to support Ukraine. We have discussed the necessity today to coordinate Aid by the international community in the best possible way. The mining is key to the reconstruction and recovery of Ukraine. In September, the Federal Council made humanitarian demining action a priority and adopted a four-year, 100 million Swiss franc aid package. In October this year, a high-level conference will be held on this matter in Geneva. Humanitarian mine clearance is a prerequisite for displaced people to be able to safely return to their homes and for agricultural land to be cultivated. In a big export-based economy like Ukraine, fewer foodstuff is harvested. This has an impact on the whole wide world. And against this backdrop, we also discussed the UN's efforts to facilitate unhindered exports of food and fertilizers from Ukraine and Russia via the Black Sea. Russia's decision to discontinue the Black Sea initiative is a threat to Global food security. Switzerland attaches major importance to this topic and has offered its good services to the UN Secretary General. The Russian war of aggression causes enormous suffering in Ukraine and far beyond, including in Russia itself. Currently, there is an accountability gap that needs to be closed. This is of importance for the ongoing conflict, but also 
die Schweiz beteiligt sich am Europarat, lanciert ein und gehört zur Дуже дякую, шановна пані президент. Thank you, esteemed Madam President, dear President here, ladies and gentlemen, journalists, the people of Switzerland. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you for, for Switzerland is not indifferent, and to be neutral for you does not mean to ignore reality, and you are morally righteous, you honestly evaluate what is going on now in Europe, and you help us defend life, and I'm grateful to you for principal political support of Ukraine from the very first day of a full-scale invasion of Russia. I thank you for joining European sanction packages and, of course, for a joint work on realization of the peace formula. The sense of Switzerland always has global meaning. The world pays attention at you. The world takes your position into account, and I'm thankful that your stance is a position that facilitates justice and restoration of a just peace, and it is very important that Switzerland is helping not only in humanitarian domain, and we have discussed today it with Madam President, it also helps financially in restoration, in long-term political support and sanction policy, and today we have discussed the new program of long-term support. Ladies and gentlemen, today on the meetings we have praised the success of yesterday's work in the format of advisors regarding peace formula. Switzerland effectively organized the meeting the day before. There was a significant expansion of representation, more than 80 states, as Madam President has mentioned, and states and international institutions are involved. We highly appreciate it, and I'm grateful to to Madam President for the agreement that our teams from tomorrow are starting the preparation to hold in Switzerland a global peace summit on the level of leaders and this summit has to deal with necessary energy, everything that we have managed to achieve and has to define that the end of the war has to be just and the restoration of the power of international law fully holistic. Switzerland is our partner in this country. Thank you. The urgent issue is the fate of Russian assets that were frozen in various jurisdictions of the world. The global majority agrees that Russian aggression is unprovoked and criminal war that does not only violate the goals and principles of the UN Charter and literally every principle norm of international law. But also brings to our times the evil that Europe has lost witness at times of the Second World War. To use the assets of Russia and people connected to it for the sake of defending against Russian aggression is not only efficient in order to punish the aggression, but it is also completely just. The one who has started the war has to pay the biggest price for it. Today, at the meetings, we have paid significant attention to this particular issue, the issue of justice, as well as the issue of Switzerland joining the process of creation of a tribunal 
regarding the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. Today the world is at the important crossroads, important from the point of view of morale. We together need to ensure full accountability of Russian war criminals and also political and military leadership of Russia. The war is started by concrete people. It is concrete people who kill and continue to work for ensuring the continuation of progression. They all need to be held accountable. I want to particularly thank Switzerland for the work in demining. And I thank you, Madam President, for the this is the leadership that underscores your humanitarian power. Currently, 174,000 square kilometers of our territory are contaminated with, Ukra with Russian mines and explosive ordinances that did not explode. And it would be very difficult for any state in the world to cope with this issue alone. Luckily, Ukraine has friends that help us, and Switzerland is one of, of such friends, and we have discussed the held of two conferences regarding demining this year. And one more thing, it is critically important that we together continue to work on sanctions tracks. Sanctions that have been applied to Russia need to be most efficient. Ukraine counts for the support of Switzerland in the global world. To block all the schemes of bypassing sanctions, currently we see that Russian missiles that are terrorizing our cities and other, other weapons that they are using, the work of their DIB, all that is based on the shadow ties with the leading countries of the world. In each Russian missile there are tens of components that were created by the companies from other countries, in particular from Europe. Without such electronic component based Russian terror would be way smaller. It would become way harder for, for, for Russia to produce missiles. Control for such special export has utmost importance and I invite Switzerland to, to maximum, maximally active work work with all partners and with international sanctions group to pressure Russia in order to block its terrorist potential. Together we are saving lives of people. I'd like to once again thank you, Madam President, to thank all your society. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. President. We will accept two to three questions. Mr. Burkhardt first. What are your expectations, Mr. President? So, six billion Swiss francs, is that sufficient? What are your financial expectations? So, six billion Swiss francs, is that sufficient? What are your financial expectations? Ah, it's for me. It's for you, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, the expectations, finance expectations you have. I understood. Thank you very much for the question. We talked about Thank you so much for the question. Today we have discussed the long, many years' support. First and foremost, we we are talking about the the destroyed houses by houses of our people, our hospitals, our schools destroyed by Russian missiles. You are well aware that that many uh, representatives of the government of Switzerland have multiple times visited us, and they we, they saw that thousands of Ukrainian schools of Ukrainian children they are under constant risks of missile strikes, the usage of ballistics, the usage of Iranian drones, and therefore the issue of shelters, the issue of security of children is very relevant. And I believe that the second issue with which it is easier for us this winter than previous winter is Russia's attacks on critical infrastructure on our energy grid. We, we have indeed survived a couple of blackouts and it was very difficult. But, but this winter we, we are more resilient and we need to strengthen it. The energy grid has to be decentralized it has to, and it has to be secure just as water supply, etc. So we can talk a lot about this, but the priorities are, are clear on, on, on what to, to, to spend this assistance. Thank you. The second question. Can I give you the second question? John Reva. Vielen Dank, uh, John Revel Reuters. Um, Mr. President, could you tell us a bit more detail about your plans for this peace conference that you've mentioned? 
Um, when would you like it to take place and what countries would you like to take part? Are you going to ask China to take part? Should Russia take part? And ultimately, what is the goal here? I mean, pure peace, but on what terms? Thank you. Thank you for the question. As regards the list of countries, we are open to, to all countries of the world that respect our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Therefore, you can draw conclusions on whom we invite. We would want uh, the countries of Global South to, to be present, for sure, and, uh, and, and on the meetings of advisors, the, the, the last one that we had in Davos, there were 80 three countries over there. I'd like to underscore once again, there was very serious work and I'd like to congratulate our teams on, on such amount of countries and it is very important so that all these representatives, their leaders, be on the summit. It is very important for us to demonstrate that the whole world is against the aggression of Russia and the whole world is all for the just peace. These points are based on, I believe that you are well aware of these points, they are based on, on, on the UN Charter and I think that there are no surprises there. If, if the countries truly want the war to end, they, they will support our plan. But once again, I'd like to say that this plan is open and therefore we involve many different countries and we involve them with their proposals and therefore, as we have today stated with Madam President, we will, we will, we will work comprehensively and now our work will start. Thank you very much. If I may add something, we have agreed that from tomorrow our teams would start working on the details, examining the details. We'd like to have a widely supported summit with as many countries as possible participating in order to be successful. We need uh, to prepare that very well and once the time has come, when we see that we can hold a successful summit. We will jointly organize that, but work will, be, will start tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. And last question already, Mr. Hessler. So you will both be traveling to the BEF in Davos, Mr. President, where the Chinese Prime Minister will also uh, be present. What role can China play for your peace formula? Does the way to peace lead via Pe Beijing? With all the respect to China and to Prime Minister of China, I am attending not him personally. I am traveling to Davos by invitation, and there I will have many various meetings with, with many leaders of the world, and, and I have personal invitation from this Switzerland, and therefore I'm here. As regards the role of China, they play a significant world, role in the world, and therefore we would want China to be involved to our formula and also involved to the summit, of course. But, but you know that not everything depends on our desire. We will see, we will hope that all civilized countries will be involved to the peace summit. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam President. We end the press conference here. Thank you for attending and have a nice evening. Thank you. Not too loud. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.